We've all heard of the buzz surrounding working in big tech. Really nice offices, really great perks and compensation, working on cutting edge products and technology. You've also heard of the product manager role, which is why you're on this video. It's a very sought after role. It's incredibly in demand. It's incredibly challenging and competitive, but it's often considered to be a bit of a prestigious golden ticket in the world of big tech. There are incredible things about working in product at a big tech company, which is why I've spent half of my career doing so. But like any situation, there are things that you don't realize until you are in it. And I think there are five things that I want to share with you today. I want to peel the curtain back around the realities of product management in big tech that aren't talked about enough, but you absolutely need to know. This video is not intended to sway you from working in big tech. There are pros and cons to everything. And I do have a general video comparing startups to big tech. So I will link that video up above if you are interested in that overview. I want to share these things because it's personally taken me almost 11 years from being in the trenches of building product in big tech. So part of this is just relaying my experience, but a part of it is also helping to set your expectations. This video is not intended to sway you from working in big tech. There are some obvious and incredible benefits that come with doing so. You learn how to work in a high performing team. The compensation can be incredibly rewarding, especially the longer you stay. And you get to work on some really challenging products, often at the cutting edge of the problems and technology available in the world. And you obviously get to build your career based on a very reputable brand. All of those things have their waiting, but I want to get into the very specifics of the things that you might face as a product manager on a daily or weekly basis that you may not realize. So without further ado, let's get into the five things that no one tells you that you absolutely need to know about working in product management at a big tech company. Number one, you will be working on a tiny piece of the pie. A big tech company will often have one or more ginormous products that are operating at immense scale and with immense complexity. Every single product and every single feature will be broken down to quite a granular level in terms of the product ownership. Different teams will look after different aspects of various products and features. So for example, if you think about YouTube, there will be different teams that look after different aspects of YouTube. You could have one or more teams that look after YouTube studio. If you are a creator, you could have other teams that look after the subscriptions page. You may have other teams that look after how YouTube videos are monetized. You can have other teams that look after the feed and the algorithm. You may also have teams that are split up based on front end and back end. The ways you can split up product ownership are basically unlimited. When you are working on such a large scale product, there will be lots of different slicing and dicing of that product pie. And especially when you are just starting your career, you are going to be looking after maybe a small part of that product, maybe one feature or maybe even a part of that feature. And this is good in that it helps you really focus. And if you are new to product, it means you can really hone that product skill for this one particular slice of the pie and you can really do that well because otherwise it could be really overwhelming. But over time, as you progress your career, unless your scope is also growing, you might become a little bit stagnated and your impact is also going to be quite limited. The other thing with owning a really small slice of the pie is sometimes when something is released, you might be working on a part of it that no one ever really sees, like in terms of the end customer. Now, working on something really tightly scoped is amazing when you are first starting your product career because you can focus on building your skills and building them well because you only have to worry about this small piece of the pie, right? But over time, maybe as you're two or three years into your career, you want to have more impact most likely. And your impact is always going to be limited when you have a really small scope. And even some other things like when there is a big product launch, Chances are you're probably not going to be playing a huge part in that because you'll be looking after this itty bitty little thing. And lots of people will be looking after itty bitty parts of that product. 
that ultimately will formulate the launch. But that is just the nature of how big tech companies operate. There is so much complexity and volume and so many customers that you do just have to break down ownership to be quite granular. Now, as you progress through your product career, maybe you move from PM to senior PM, maybe then to group PM. Ideally, that scope should increase, but depending on the company, depending on the product and how teams are structured, you might still end up focusing on one very distinct area of the product. So if you think about YouTube, maybe you might only know how the creator or YouTube studio works. You might never really know how the subscriptions work. You might never really know how the YouTube app works. It's often really common to have teams that are dedicated to building mobile experiences versus web experiences. One thing to keep in mind is even if you're working on a product feature or a part of that feature, that will still come with its challenges because of the sheer size and scale at which you are working with. If you're talking about part of a feature that is being used by 100,000 customers or users, that is quite significant. So that always matters as well is even if you're working on a really small thing, what is the impact of that feature on the user or on the customer and eventually on the business? So there can be interesting elements to it. Number two is you won't actually ship as much product as you think you will. The product development life cycle is a slow burn because you have to do so much more in a big tech environment than just building new products and features. And to some extent, every tech company needs to do that. But the amount of maintenance and non-functional product work and alignment that comes in this sort of environment is just at that next level. And I do think there are caveats to this because if you work in a company that is really focused on AI and you're really trying to capitalize on the current boom in AI, you're probably gonna be moving a lot faster than if you have an existing number of products and customers that you're just slowly iterating on over time. So again, this comes down to how different products and teams are broken up with a company and really how those different products are enabling the company's product strategy because they will always be part of that strategy which are hopefully working on the cutting edge part of things and really moving quickly. But I think the majority of products and teams and people will be focused on working on things that probably aren't as cutting edge and are really around improving existing products and maybe even working on new products, but that shit can be really, really slow. I don't know if this one catches anyone by surprise because you probably assume big tech company to be really fast paced. And I do think they are fast paced in a certain way, but in terms of actually looking at the product that is shipped and the value that is given to customers, I think that part of it can actually be a lot less than it's perceived to be. So what exactly would your teams be doing if they're not working on you know, new features and products for customers? Well, there's a heck of a lot of non-functional work, reliability and security and just pure maintenance of products that you probably have hundreds, if not thousands of people using. That is a huge effort for a development team to just purely maintain, which leaves a lot less room for building new stuff. Something else that has to commonly happen in big tech companies is sunsetting products. So sometimes you have to go to lengths to actually get rid of products that you already have, or maybe you are building a new version of that and you have to migrate customers over to that new one. Everything is taking away from the time you could be spending shipping that next new thing. But product management isn't about always shipping the next new thing. It's about solving problems. And if you have a product that is maybe built on legacy technology or maybe wasn't completely built in the right way or maybe it doesn't actually do what customers want and you getting rid of that solves a problem maybe for the customer or even for the business, sometimes those things need to be prioritized. All in all, I mean to say like, do not expect that you're just gonna be shipping stuff out of the park all the time. I think on average, some of the big tech brands would do maybe one or two really big product announcements a year. And sometimes those announcements will come out before the product is ready 
All those announcements will come out when they are asking people to sign up for the beta of that product. So just because you see big shiny conferences and product launches, it doesn't always mean everyone is scrambling behind the scenes to just ship and ship and ship. A part of that is marketing and sometimes product decisions are driven by marketing events as well. So that can be a little bit annoying sometimes, I'm not gonna lie, um, but it is again, just the reality of working in big tech. Some other things that can slow down shipping is pure communication with other teams. Because of the way in which teams are separated in big tech environments, you're often dependent on other teams for something. Some other things that can slow down development time is sometimes share communication, or even dependencies you have on other teams. And just because you have a heap of engineers working on something doesn't always make it more efficient as well. I think there is probably an optimal size to an engineering team. And when you exceed that, you actually reduce the velocity of that team. So there are lots of factors that go into why things are slow, but really what I wanted to get at is just the general perception that because you're working in a faster paced environment, all it means is that you're gonna be shipping shiny new product all of the time. Number three, decision-making can be quite slow. Because there are so many people involved from different cross-functional teams, you as the product manager often don't have all of the autonomy you need to make the decision. You need to gather input from so many other people, whether they are other engineers, other product teams. Obviously, you need to get approvals and support for prioritizing something and making sure that you do have the endorsement to go ahead with what your roadmap says. You might need to get data that the data team needs to help you with. Maybe you need to talk to security and go through architecture review. Like there are so many people involved in even the smallest product feature sometimes. And I think again, this comes down to scale. You might be working on something that is quite tightly scoped but if it has the impact to reach thousands and thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people, then more care needs to be taken into every decision that goes into that product. Alignment is also a very key word here. Brace yourself for the slow dance of alignment and getting everyone on the same page. You might have a great idea. You may have done the product discovery for that idea. You may even have the data to back that up. Ultimately, you probably need to go through a few layers to get everyone on the same page in order to move forward with your plans. If your company has a more flat structure, this can be a lot easier, but getting everyone on the same page is not the be all end all. You might get the prioritization for something and the support and excitement for that thing you wanted to build. And the roadmap you presented has been really nicely received by everyone, but suddenly, some other team might come in and have a dependency for you that is actually of a greater priority than your roadmap. And again, it comes back to maybe having to realign. Slow decision-making, I think that really sums it up for itself. So while as a product manager, yes, you are ultimately accountable for your product, you don't really have all of the autonomy in the world to make the decisions that you need to make. And you will be reliant and dependent on a whole raft of other people giving you their input in order for you to make that decision. Number four is you will hit a learning plateau. Now your first few years in product management, no matter where you are working, are going to be an absolute roller coaster and your learning curve will be exponential. As you become more familiar with the way your company operates, you get familiar with the product development life cycle and how to communicate with other teams and whatever the planning process is, Everything that goes into making product decisions, whether that's pre-development, during development or post-development, you will get used to all of that. And that's when, unless you are presented with an increased product scope, a brand new product area, or a challenge that really forces you to learn something new, you can get into a bit of a cycle of rinse and repeat. I think you can work on the same product and still have new challenges and still encounter new decisions that you need to make. And when you first start working in a bigger tech company, there is so much to learn outside of just your product domain, how the company operates, how decisions are made, who is who, what is the background information on all of the products that you have? 
There might be legacy decisions that were made that you need to understand or just historical context. But there comes a point when I think you become so familiar with the way things are done, with your product domain, with your customers. And sometimes a lot of the bureaucracy and process that does come in working with any kind of big company, you get so comfortable and familiar with it that you do stop learning. I think some of the ways you can continue learning is either if you get that increased product scope as you progress or you you do learning in your own time. But the last thing you wanna do is become really, really stagnant in your product career because you know how the company operates, you know how to influence people, you understand your product inside out, you understand your customers, and that is a great place to be. But keep in mind that unless you are constantly presented with new challenges and new ways to figure out how to make the best product decision, you are probably gonna hit a learning plateau. And I think this can happen unless you try and create those internal opportunities for yourself. And sometimes even when you move internally within a big company, that change is not enough. I think that can go a little way towards helping you learn something new, but ultimately sometimes you just need to completely change your environment. And that could be changing industry, changing to somewhere that uses totally different technology, is solving a problem for completely different types of customers. Learning as a product manager is going to be really, really important. So be mindful of this one. In doing some research for this video, I was looking on Quora just to get a feel for what people felt after working in big tech for a really long time. And one of the interesting things I found was around the level of comfort that you can fall into when you work in a big tech environment, or I guess any real big company for a really long amount of time. And you might have frustrations with the way things are done, right? As can happen in any sort of big corporation. But because you get used to this certain level of comfort, especially with the really great compensation and perks that big tech provides, I think that can further exacerbate the lack of learning because you tend to prioritize the comfort over the learning and sometimes learning is uncomfortable it means you need to put yourself in new situations and new scenarios whether that means you move to a different team or you take on an additional scope of products or maybe even doing something outside of work but the comfort trap is a real trap that i think is an important one to keep in mind it's a great place to learn a hell of a lot but if you don't change things whether that's in the company or outside the company in your spare time enough you can get way too comfortable and that can lead to a stagnation in your learning and last but not least number five is that the strategic direction of your product is not always up to you and you don't actually have as much autonomy as you think you might have. This might come as no surprise, but like any big company, oftentimes the big shots, the strategic direction of the company, as well as the product is set by the higher ups and that is filtered down. So you might have a backlog of customer feedback and customer requests. You might be dealing with noisy customers day in, day out, but ultimately you need to make sure your team and your product and your product area moves in the direction of the company's strategy. There are ways in which you can work around this. So if you strongly believe that you should be working on something that the company isn't prioritizing, you should absolutely advocate for your team and for your product. But that takes time, that takes effort. And when you do that time and time again, and you don't get the support you need, you might, your, your motivation might fizzle out. There are different ways in which a product manager can handle a scenario like that. So if you have priorities given to you that don't align with what customers want, you can put forward a, a case for why you challenge the prioritization of the company. But ultimately it is going to be a game of influencing those higher ups who are going to be more incentivized to move the company in a certain direction. You do have to put your business hat on as a product manager as well. It's not always about giving customers what they've asked for. A lot of it is also about making the relevant trade-offs between what customers want, what you think is best for the product, what engineering need to do for the product. And then there's, of course, just the overall company and business direction and making sure whatever you work on is in line with that. Basically, I'm saying you don't have all that much autonomy. I've seen countless examples of where people will leave tech companies 
because they don't agree with the direction that the leadership teams are going in. And it's really unfortunate when things like that happen because one could question that the product manager is closest to the customer, right? Like you're like on the ground, you're the voice of the customer and you're really the voice for your team. So it can be really disheartening when that happens. It's just the name of the game, it's how business works and it's something to just be mindful of is that in a really large tech company or even any big company environment, you just have less influence, you have less say. You can influence your engineering teams, you can influence your other cross-functional partners, but can you ultimately influence the company's product strategy? No, and maybe you don't want to, and in which case it's fine. But when you become attached to your product and your customers, you will find yourself wanting to really advocate for that. And it can be a bit of an uphill battle. So there you have it. Those are the five things that we don't talk about enough when it comes to big tech and product management. I hope this was a somewhat insightful. I'm really curious to hear the experience you may have had if you have worked in a big tech environment as a product manager. So share your comments below. Tell me what you agree with in terms of what I said or maybe what you disagree with. Have I left something off the list that's even more of a glaring thing that we don't talk about? Really interested to start that conversation. I hope this does not sway you from exploring the world of big tech because it is a fascinating space It's a great place to learn. It comes with incredible amount of perks and you get to work with incredibly, incredibly smart people. But I think it's always interesting to look at everything with um, a critical lens and just be more realistic about what you're getting yourself into. So I hope this was useful. And if you got this far, thank you so much. I will see you in my next video. Bye.